What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, I have your WWE Extreme Rules 2019 preview and predictions for you guys. You guys know how these videos work. We're going to run through the entire card, breaking down every single matchup, giving my personal thoughts and opinions on every single matchup on the card, everything leading up to the feud, what I think about the feud, what I expect out of the match, what I hope happens, what I think the match may lead to, and everything in between. To be honest with you guys, I mean, it's called Extreme Rules, and I, I hate these gimmick pay-per-views where it's like, you know, Extreme Rules and Hell in a Cell and, and Money in the bank and like I, I don't like that portion of it you know I don't think anything about this card really says extreme rules guys I know we have like a no holds barred match in this tag team feud with the Undertaker and Roman we have the last man standing match we have a handicap match and that pretty much it out of the stipulation matchups I don't know I'm just not getting the extreme rules feel to it but anyways after taking a closer look at the card man when you break it down and look at it from afar there are some things on this card that are absolutely just stupid and like I don't care about but there are also a ton of matches on this card that look absolutely fire so let's go ahead and dive right in and get started with my predictions on Extreme Rules 2019. Before we get into the card, guys, another show. Another show without my man Finn Balor on the card. What the hell is up with that? He wins the Intercontinental Championship from Bobby Trashley at WrestleMania, and now he just, I mean, he, he struggles to find matchups. Why not just add Shinsuke Nakamura and Finn Balor to the card? I mean, you, you, you love to stack up pay-per-views anyway. Add this matchup to the card, man. Come on. My boy Finn Balor left off another show. Maybe they'll add it. By the time you're seeing this, they could have already added it, but as of Tuesday night that I'm recording this video, they have not added Finn Balor to the card, so hopefully they'll add him, but for now, he is left off card and that is upsetting. Come on, Brad. So starting things off with the pre-show, guys, I do guarantee that this will probably be the pre-show match, right? We have the Cruiserweight Championship, the new champion, Drew Gulak, defending it against Tony Nese, who just lost the title in that triple threat match with Akira Tozawa involved, and I think that this is going to be a pretty solid one. You know, Tony Nese can go, Drew Gulak can go, and I think that this is going to be a pretty good one. They always deliver 205 Live, putting on some of the best wrestling in the world today. So I think that Drew Gulak is going to win here. I think it only makes sense. You know, he just won the title. Wouldn't make sense to go title flip flop here. I really don't see that happening. So I think uh, unless they're just doing, you know, a nod to Drew Gulak last show and they're going to drop the title here to Tony Nese. I don't see that happening though. I'm going to go with Drew Gulak to retain here over Tony Nese. Next up, guys, we have another matchup that probably could be on the pre-show. I'm not sure if it'll just be one or two matches on the pre-show, but next up, we have the Raw Tag Team Championship match between the Revival and the Uso. Should be a really good match. You know, both teams are two of the best in the world, so I am really looking forward to this matchup. Hopefully, it's not on the pre-show. I really want to see this on the main card. Both teams totally deserve it, and the Revival just, you know, pretty much just winning the Raw Tag Team Championships. I think they need to keep them here versus the Usos. I love the Usos a lot, but I think that they need to keep them on the Revival, especially, you know, since the Revival have been treated like dirt a lot of the time, so I think they definitely need to keep it here. I'm going to go with the Revival and a really good matchup with the Usos. Next up, guys, we have a singles match between Aleister Black and Cesaro, a matchup that I am really, really looking forward to. I'm really glad to see Cesaro getting a singles push here. I do think he's going to come up short here. I just think that they're going to give, I just think they're going to give Aleister Black this win here. It makes a lot of sense to have Aleister Black win in this pay-per-view here versus Cesaro, but I do think this is going to be potential match of the night. I think that these guys, if they give them the time, you know, they let them go out there and do their thing, this this is a match that could totally tear the house down. And this is another great matchup that we're getting here on this Extreme Rules card. I'm looking forward to it a lot. And I think that Aleister Black is going to win. So I'm going to pick Aleister Black in this one. But I hope that they make Cesaro look strong. They get a lot of back and forth going. You know, we get some good sequences, some great wrestling between these two. But ultimately, I think that Cesaro will fade to black. Next up, guys, we have a triple threat SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship matchup between Daniel Bryan and Rowan taking on the New Day and also taking on Heavy Machinery. So we got a three-way here between these three teams. I really wish we could get some sort of stipulation in here, like a ladder or even a table or just something crazy. You know, it's extreme rules, but there's no really extreme about it. But I think in a triple threat tag team match, there is no disqualification, so maybe we'll get some interesting things take place here in this matchup. But I am excited for this matchup. I think we do have some good stuff. I'm not big fans of Heavy Machinery. However, they have impressed me in all of their matches. I think they're really underrated. Um, even though I'm not, you know, big fans of them, like I said, I still think that they're pretty underrated in the ring, and I expect all three teams to deliver here. I hope that Daniel Bryan and Rowan do retain. I think that it is important for them. I think they're really on top of their game, and probably the best team on SmackDown Live at this moment, so I do want Rowan and Daniel Bryan to retain, and I'm going to pick them to retain here. No championship change here. I'm going with Daniel Bryan and Rowan. I really enjoy their work as a team right now, and I don't think they should drop the titles until a hotter team comes along, so I am going to go with the champions to take home their respective SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships. 
Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match between Bayley taking on Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross in a two-on-one handicap match. So Nikki Cross did get to pick the stipulation for this matchup. She chose a handicap match to help Alexa Bliss. But to be honest with you guys, I do not care about this feud. I, I really do not. I hope Bayley wins here, but I do not care about this feud because I cannot. I just cannot get over Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss being together, being a team, being a unit. It just doesn't fit their characters to me. I don't like the way it's going. I don't enjoy it. It's not entertaining. I'm not getting anything out of it personally. So I hope that Bailey can retain here. Maybe that leads to Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross breaking up or something because I am not a fan of that of that shtick. I'm not I'm not enjoying it at all. But uh, I hope Bailey retains here. She really does need to retain after all the bullcrap she went through last year. I know she defeated Alexa Bliss last time, but she it is it, I think it just as important on this show that she needs to retain the SmackDown Live Women's Championship again and to keep her looking strong, keep her on top of things. And don't be surprised if maybe Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross are beating the hell out of Bailey, and we get a return from one Sasha Banks and then maybe Sasha Banks turns heel on Bailey, setting up a SummerSlam matchup that is something that would be great I think that would be the way to book this thing have Bailey and Alexa Bliss get into it have Nikki Cross maybe the ref goes down they're beating the hell out of Bailey Sasha Banks with the save and Sasha Banks turns heel on Bailey after that after her triumphant return she's also going to get bo booed the hell out of so have the Sasha heel turn have her beat the hell out of Bailey set up your SmackDown Live Women's Championship match for SummerSlam and that is the program running forward after all their history, after all the ditzy do's and the terrible booking and everything. That is how you get it, especially with all the heel heat that Sasha's going to receive for what, you know, her walking out or whatever. People hated her for that, so that is your program right there. Freaking book it. Next up, guys, we have a last man standing match between Jan Strowman and Bobby Trashley. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, and you're probably going to be shocked by this, but I'm actually looking forward to this matchup. I know, I know it's insane. I know it's crazy to think about, but I'm actually looking forward to this matchup. When you get two big freak athletes like this, two massive dudes like this, and there's no championship involved, you have a last man standing match stipulation in this thing, it could make for some really entertaining stuff, and I'm really excited for it. You know, uh, you, you get these guys going hard at each other. I want it to be booked, though, very strong. We don't want any crappy slow pace. It needs to be both of these men getting in the ring and beating the hell out of each other for 8 to 12 minutes and have this thing go on strong. I really like to see that. You know, we've had all these things, uh, these different things happen over the past few weeks with them destroying everything, and you know, that's their gimmick. That's their thing. Braun Strowman, you guys know how I feel about him. Bobby Trashley, same reason. You guys know how I feel about these guys. But going up against each other, if you put them in a matchup where it's just hard hitting and just you know, hard nose, freaking running into each other, big slams, power moves, crazy athleticism on display from both big men. I think you could really make for some entertaining stuff. And don't sleep on this match, guys. I'm telling you, don't sleep on this match. I'm actually looking forward to it, but I think ultimately, I mean, Braun Strowman has come a long way. He's facing the injury. I don't know if he's going to be facing that injury here in this matchup. If he does have the injury on display, which he probably should, um, I'm going to go with Bobby Trashley. But also, Bobby Trashley looks super strong against Rey Mysterio. Coming out there and burying Mysterio, I mean, to build up this match. So maybe they're going to book Bobby Lashley to look super strong, guys. I mean, it could possibly happen. So I think I'm going to go with Bobby Trashley, man. I'm going to go Bobby Trashley, and we'll see what happens. Next up, guys, we have the United States Championship match between Ricochet taking on a heel AJ Styles, a freshly heel AJ Styles, and you know the club is going to be in his corner. You know the club reformed here on Ricochet, beating the hell out of him, and I really hate that they gave away this match twice on free television, guys. I really don't like that. I wish they would have kept these two apart until we got to the matchup at Extreme Rules, but I am going to go into You know they're going to deliver. I mean, they're, they're great talents, but we have seen this matchup twice before, but, um, you know, I, I'm excited to see what they can deliver on pay-per-view, and and, I mean, it's a great match. You know it's going to be a great match. It's two guys that, that put in amazing work in the ring, and um, I'm excited to see what they do here. Maybe we can get some good involvement here. What ultimately sucks, though, is they, they totally buried the club, though, in this feud already. I mean, Ricochet beating both of them twice in one night and, you know, just kind of making them look weak without AJ. I don't know how I feel about that one, but we'll see what happens. I think this match definitely has the potential for match of the night, and I am looking forward to what these two can do. Hopefully, they take it up another notch here at the pay-per-view at Extreme Rules, and I'm excited to see what they do with it. But I am I'm going to go with Ricochet to retain. It looks like they're building him up as a star, and AJ Styles is going to put him over here at Extreme Rules. So I'm going to go with Ricochet to retain the United States Championship. 
Next up, guys, we have the WWE Championship match between Kofi Kingston taking on Samoa Joe. Really big challenge here for Samoa Joe getting a WWE Championship opportunity here versus Kofi Kingston. I, I love the way they've been booking Kofi, guys. They've been booking him really strong. I don't like, you know, the pancake stuff as the WWE Champion, you know. I like to have a serious champ, you know, take his job seriously. But to be honest with you, we've kind of gotten, like, both sides of it. We've got the goofy pancake side, but we've also got the side where he gets in the ring and gets the job done. Like, he has looked great as champion as far as putting on good matches having great, you know, uh, chemistry in the ring with all of his opponents. He's really done a great job as WWE Champion, and I have enjoyed it. I have to say I have enjoyed it. And Samoa Joe will be another great challenger. I'm, I'm excited to see what chemistry they have in the ring, what we can see from these two, and I am I am very excited for it. Um, this one's kind of tough. I don't know how they're going to book this thing. Are we going to get Samoa Joe finally capturing the WWE Championship? Or is, uh, you know, Kofi is reportedly injured, so does that have something to do with it? Is he going to have to take time off? Are they going to take the title off of him, give it to Joe for a little bit? have Kofi come back or are we going to finally see the end of Kofi Kingston's reign I'm, I'm pretty interested in that um, you got to be thinking about SummerSlam. You got to be thinking about what, you know, what they're wanting to build towards as far as feuds and stuff going forward. But I just hope for a good match, and it's kind of hard to predict, but I think I'm going to go with Kofi Kingston to retain. I, I think that the injury isn't severe enough. He is going to wrestle here, and I think that Kofi will retain the WWE Championship. Hopefully, it's a good matchup. I am excited for it. I love Joe, and I think it'll be a good one. So I'm going to go with Kofi to retain, but hopefully Joe doesn't look terrible in defeat. Next up, guys, we have the Winners Take All Extreme Rules match for the WWE Universal Championship and WWE Raw Women's Championship between Becky Lynch and my man, Becky Lynch's boyfriend, taking on Trash Corbin and Lacey Evans. It's kind of crazy because you have not only one of my favorite male wrestlers and one of my favorite female wrestlers, but you have them taking on my least favorite male and my least favorite female besides Nia Jax in all of WWE here in this Winner Take All match. And you guys know how I feel about this angle. We've discussed it in, in the last uh, I even tweeted it during the last show. I can't even remember what the hell the show. Uh, stomping Grounds. During Stomping Grounds, I tweeted out prior to the match even taking place between Trash Corbin and Seth Rollins. I tweeted, guys, I promise you to Jesus, as soon as Lacey Evans came out as a special referee, I said they are going to have a winner-take-all tag team matchup at Extreme Rules. Garen F and T it. And what did we get, Brad? We got exactly what I said we were going to get. And I do not like this at all. I think it's terrible. First of all, Trash Corbin and Lacey Evans are terrible. I don't like them in the ring. I, you guys know, I, I don't I don't like Corbin. I don't th like his character. I don't like his heel work. I think he's just a middle school bully and everything he does is basic level at best. I don't like the relationship angle between Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch. They make it very cringy. They make it very unnatural. It comes off very forced and it comes off very terrible on my television. However, I am going to go into this with an open mind. I'm going to treat it at face value. We're going to see what goes down here in this winner-take-all match. I don't like it. Again, I'm not looking forward to it. I, I really am not, but I don't think this is going to main event the show. I think the other matchup that we're about to discuss will main event the show. This is why you're seeing this matchup prior to the next one, but I'm going to go with Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch to retain. God, I hope to Jesus they retain. Just I, I hope to Jesus they retain, and uh, we get some actual good competitors for Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch in this uh, leading up into SummerSlam after this pay-per-view, guys. So hopefully they retain because I do not see Trash Corbin and Lacey Evans as champion. They're god-awful. And for our main event, guys, we have the no-holds-barred match between The Undertaker and Roman Reigns as a team, taking on Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre, and I am absolutely sick of this feud. I am just sick of seeing Shane McMahon on my TV. I'm sick of just Roman Reigns and Shane McMahon feuding. I don't understand why The Undertaker was plugged in here. It makes absolutely no sense. You know, the man's last few matchups have been horrendous on every show, and I think that uh, th this, this matchup I'm not looking forward to. I don't care to see the Undertaker in the ring no more. He's a legend. We love him. Everybody loves The Undertaker. We respect The Undertaker, but we do not want to see him in this capacity. And you know what? I'm I'm going to watch this matchup. I'm going to go into it, but I'm not looking forward to it. And hopefully, it, maybe it'll be much better than I'm expecting. But I don't expect that to happen. I do not expect it to be better than I'm expecting. I'm not excited for this matchup, but we will have to see how it goes. Again, this feud has ran its course with me. I'm sick of Shane McMahon. I could see Kevin Owens. My boy Kevin Owens, you know, he cut that promo on Shane McMahon. Fantastic, man. Kevin Owens is so beautiful. I freaking love him so much. I think that uh, we could see a Kevin Owens interference maybe. Maybe Kevin Owens helps Roman Reigns and The Undertaker win here, setting up Undertaker versus Drew McIntyre. That's, you know, the storyline that they're thinking of at the moment. That's the rumor mill. And you gotta think, maybe, I don't know. I honestly don't know where they go from here after this matchup. Whether It doesn't matter who wins. Whether Shane and Drew win or Roman and Undertaker win, I really don't know where this feud goes from here. That's probably the only thing that I'm interested in seeing is the final result of this and where they go from here. This feud has been going all summer long and 
I am totally over it. I think the only thing that would make this matchup worth it is to see my boy Kevin Owens come out there and beat the hell out of somebody. But ultimately, I think I'm going to go with Roman Reigns and The Undertaker winning. Maybe Kevin Owens gets involved, I'm not sure. But I think that's what I'm going to go with. Roman Reigns and Undertaker do win here, but I don't think that'll end the feud. I, I really don't think that'll end the feud. But we'll have to see how it goes. But that is pretty much it for your Extreme Rules 2019 predictions, guys. I would love to know all of your thoughts on my predictions as well as your own down in the comment section below. Are you sick of this feud just like I am? What match are you looking forward to most on the card? Shouldn't the Intercontinental Champion Finn Balor be on this card? Let me know all the stuff down below. I would really appreciate it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.